Hey friends, we're back with another Lo-Fi Let's Play. I'm Lee Alexander, and I'm so excited today to get to show you one of my favorite games. This is Sierra's The Colonel's Bequest. It's one of the classic adventures put out by the label. Uh, it came out in 1989, and um, it's not as well known as uh, some of the other Sierra games, but it bears all the hallmarks of um, Roberta Williams' creative leadership, which includes um, strong female characters, um, quirky naming conventions, and a, a sort of sense of demure humor, um, a wittiness that uh, sort of set her apart from other adventure game creators that uh, were uh, more excited to either be perverted or st or uh, sadistic. Of course, that oversimplifies it. This is a, a gruesome and very adult tale. Um, in this, you play Laura Bow. I believe that she is a journalism student, and she comes to a manor on the bayou with her friend Lillian from school. Uh, it turns out the reason for the family invitation is that the titular colonel is going to discuss his will, um, which is what a bequest is. And if you're like me and you do remember this game, that would have been where you learned the word bequest. Um, so the opening credit sequence is, is a bit long, um, but it's a nice bit of animation and, and funny music by which you're introduced to um, many of the characters that will be at this mansion with you, um, the colonel himself, um, his uh, relatives, and uh, as you can see, there's a, a sort of convention as if you're sort of watching watching the play. You know, when it, when it asks you to play at the beginning, it says, please be seated, the curtain is going up, and if you fail to get the copy protection right, it uh, says this performance is sold out. So even though this sort of theatrical convention uh, is not usually present during the rest of the game. Uh, it's a cute bit of uh, framing to start with. Let's just uh, let's skip this a little bit and uh, go to uh, the beginning of the game. As you see, this clock uh, and this act structure is basically the act structure is all that sort of remains of the of the the theater framing convention. But the time is very important to note as maybe you'll get to see as we go through this game together. So we begin at Act 1 with the chiming of 7 p.m. Uh, this is the guest room you share with Lillian. Though a bit tired looking, it seems comfortable enough. Well, that it looks pretty comfortable. I, I think a, a bare dark fireplace and a, some cracked tiles is comfortable enough. I mean, I've never stayed in a vintage manor, have you? Uh, our friend Lillian says, Laura dear, please excuse me. I'm going to go freshen up in the bathroom. Why don't you explore the estate a bit? Okay, yeah, that's sure to go well. So, unlike many of the games uh, that I've showed you so far in the series, oh, here you see Laura observes that everybody is acting strange. And uh, what would Daddy do in a situation like this? So, uh, honey, if things don't feel right, they probably aren't. Observe the situation closely, yet be unobtrusive. Okay, that's an important hint. Explore your surroundings quietly and carefully. Try to question the others without raising suspicion. Notice small details, take lots of notes, and above all, be careful. Okay. And uh, the first thing we see uh, Laura go ahead and do is uh, go on and get her notebook out of her suitcase because, um, you know, it's the first step to any mystery. So what I was about to say before the intro continued is unlike many of the games we've seen so far in Lo-Fi Let's Plays, uh, the parser is very sophisticated. Uh, most things that you could ever want to look at in the environment are accounted for by the very rich prose. The finely carved fireplaces show the craftsmanship of bygone days. Uh, look at the painting. And uh, above the fireplace, you notice a picture of Colonel Dijon in his younger, more vital days. On the opposite wall, you also see a picture of a little girl. Funny, the girl's eyes have a strange, hollow look to them. Well, we're off to a spooky start, but um, I think uh, our dad would advise us to think a lot about um, what uh, what that could mean, a hollow-eyed uh, painting on the opposite wall. So let's have a look around. Um, so like here's Lillian's bed. If we try to open the suitcase, it'll say Lillian's suitcase is locked. And interestingly, um, the game is pretty sensitive to proximity. If I were to stand like right here and try to open a suitcase that's mine, it says I'm not close enough. So. Uh, have to get back and uh, open the suitcase and lo and behold it's just some clothes um, so why don't we move along and uh, as you see I'm using the arrow keys to navigate I prefer that for this game as it's a little more precise than than the uh, mouse but you can point and click too technically um, although typing is going to be your friend in this particular game um, 
We're friends, aren't we? Thank you so much for coming along with me. It looks as if this might have been a nursery at one time. Now it has been converted into a makeshift guest room with Ethel as its current guest. Now don't worry. Um, luckily I'm going to keep track of all the relatives for you. Ethel is our friend Lillian's mother. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's been a while since I uh, acquainted myself with the family, but she is the Colonel's sister, I believe. Let's see. Ethel is a stylishly dressed, overly made up older woman. Many years of hard drinking have taken their toll on her face. Oh, uh, toll on her, as her face is puffy and red, and her skin has wrinkled prematurely. She always seems to have a drink in her hand. You have never met her before, but Ethel is your friend Lillian's mother. Oh, okay. Well, you know, I feel for you, Ethel. Ask Ethel about herself. Can we do that? I'm not discussing myself with you, says Ethel, and there's a pleasant bit of animation. I think these are actually wonderful graphics. I like them at precisely this level of fidelity most of the time. Um, what about... Tell us about our friend Lillian. What, would, what might we learn? Lillian and I have had our ups and downs over the years, like any mother and daughter. Interesting. Um ask Ethel about Henri, which is the name of the colonel himself, who, who we're all here to visit and see about his, uh, his will. Henry's always been a penny-pinching miser, says Ethel, and he hates people. That's why he lives way out here. Interesting. Well, you know, we could, uh, look, Ethel, um, there's some things to, uh, observe, and, and it gives you something different every time. There's interesting room here, but, um, I want to be able to show you as much as possible uh, of the mansion of uh, Colonel Henri and of the unique mechanics of this adventure game uh, in the time we have together today. Um, so as we uh, exit our bedroom, this is the back upstairs hallway of the mansion. This is quite quite architecturally sophisticated. There's a, um, let's see, a statue. Uh, two Greek statues. Cool, I see. Um, well, we can walk into the bathroom. I didn't have to type open door. And uh, we find that just as she said she was going to freshen up, and it's still about 7 o'clock, Lillian is, uh, is still in here at the moment. Hi, Laura. I'm feeling better now. That ride through the bayou had me plum frazzled. If you need to freshen up, too, I'll be done in just a bit. All right, Lillian. Sure. Okay. So we see Lillian going about her business, um, actually in quite a detailed way, washing and drying. I feel a little creepy uh, watching her, but um, let's get to know Lillian a, a little bit. Um, you know wouldn't be a horror or, or a mystery game without a little bit of the sinister and the voyeuristic, let's just say. Your friend Lillian Prune is a rebellious flapper. Oh, I think this is set in the uh, 20s or the 30s, probably the 20s, because I think that was when there were flappers. Uh, like you, she is 20 years old, but unlike you, she has been known to hang out in speakeasies, smoke, and run around with several young men. She is assertive and outgoing to the point of obnoxiousness, but underneath it all, you believe her to be a lonely, insecure girl. Personally, I don't think there's much wrong with being assertive and outgoing, but it, I think it's nice that Laura feels kindly toward her friend Lillian anyway. Um, so Lillian now leaves the bathroom in her fancy flapper dress. And uh, why don't we uh, have a look around ourselves? Now, just as an example of the sense of humor of Roberta Williams, which set her apart from some of her colleagues at Sierra, if I were to want to use the toilet, excuse us, it says, and uh, immediately... You'll see the game sort of cut away, slam the door. Well, did you think this was Leisure Suit Larry? Um, which is, of course, a reference to another game uh, that was out at the time. Uh, so that was a little bit of a Roberta Williams humor and tone. Um, so now we see Laura automatically goes to wash her hands. Um, very, you know, hygienic and conscientious young lady. Um, what if we were to decide to freshen up a bit? Um... You know, I, I think that when I'm in strange mansions, what I like to do is take a shower. So, as you see, uh, you do feel a bit grimy. Now, if you have sensitive eyes and, and naked pixel bodies offend you, you might want to avert them now because actually, uh, Miss Laura strips fully down and uh, enters the shower in a very uh, bit of Hitchcockian framing. We see a figure enter in a shadowy knife plunges through the curtain. That is actually quite an elaborate death animation. Um, I, hope, I hope everyone who's listening was actually watching that. Didn't Alfred teach you anything, Alfred Hitchcock? Um, no, I guess not. Luckily, uh, I have a save there, you know, just so we can go back to how things were in the days before we took a shower. Uh, just let's look at the waste basket. Oops. Sorry. 
Look, waste basket. You see a waste based paper basket near the sink. Look in waste paper basket. Currently, it is empty. And uh, this game gives you all kinds of important words like currently. Um, that is a tiny clue, again, that you should probably look back in the basket at a later time. Again, uh, as adventure games be became more refined, their vocabulary became, you know, very, very distinct. And um, there was, uh, you know, there's langu ways to understand their language if you know how to look. Now, we can assume that Lillian has gone back in her room. Uh, let's, ha let's go and see if she's available now. Uh, if you ask me, I don't think she has any. Here's Ethel shaking her handkerchief and, uh, oh, hello, dear. It looks like they are uh, going to stop talking as soon as I enter the room. Uh, talk to Lillian. Hey, Lillian, want to hang out because I came on this family vacation with you? Uh, how's it all going? You know, not that well. Um, you kind of just expect me to... Uh, entertain myself. Tell me about your, your uh, Uncle Henry. And I are very close, at least we used to be. He's always been like a father to me, you know. Well, I wonder what happened, Lillian. Uh, everyone in this family sort of has their grudge to bear against Colonel Dijon, but uh, they're not going to divulge their secrets to you so easily. Um, luckily, before we go too far in the exploration department, I have a very good idea. What if we investigate find a secret door. Um, the clue about the hollow portrait eyes have, have let us know about the existence of this particular small hidden room. And uh, this is the wall that, uh, if we face this wall and look holes, the eye holes of the portrait, we can see our ability to spy on this conversation between Ethel and Lillian if we want. Gertie isn't deserving of the money. Mother, what are you going to do about it? Lillian wants to know as as uh, through this bizarre and vaguely stilted animation, Ethel can be seen to carry a glass and a handkerchief at all times. And let me tell you, observing these tiny prop details is going to matter. So uh, they're arguing. Uh, there's, this is not a happy family. Uh, you and I will never agree on anything. So we, we've we learned that uh, Ethel resents uh, another inheritor and that uh, Lillian and her mother don't uh, seem to get along very well. Uh, so looks like uh, that's all there is to know. What happens if we look through the hole of this portrait. Is anyone in the next room? Look, holes. See what we can see, everybody. Uh, there's nothing of interest in, Ru interest of, in Rudy and Clarence's room. Okay, well, interestingly enough, we've, uh, we've discovered a passage, and uh, why don't we continue uh, having a look around and see what else is in this mansion, who else there might be to meet. Um, Oh, this elegant room must be the colonel's. There's an elevator here. Here we see the colonel. And now, interestingly enough, the time passes by 15 minutes. Every time you encounter a scene, time moves on. It actually takes a few playthroughs of this game. Oh, oh my goodness. We've seen the maid kiss the uh, colonel. Uh, she's a, a caricature of a French maid. Uh, very stereotypical um, portrayal, and, and I apologize if we have uh, any French uh, viewers and listeners who are offended by the caricature. Uh, her name is Fifi. Um, actually, unfortunately, this game contains uh, an even worse stereotype in the character of Celie, who is the uh, housekeeper. Her family uh, was former slaves on this plantation, and she now practices voodoo, and uh, she plays uh, you know, the role of uncomfortable stereotype pretty well uh, in this game, so that's kind of a probably a, a thing that would have received more overt criticism today, but, you know, I, I believe that, you know, Roberta Williams often traded in common caricatures and stereotypes. She was fond of fairy tales uh, because they gave her an existing character structure against which to create puzzles. So, you know, not that it's okay that something in this game is racist, uh, but anyway, let's have a look at the colonel. And the thing I was going to say about the time passing uh, is that, so you have about you know, the time passes in 15 minute segments, and if I hadn't walked into this room, time wouldn't have passed. Uh, so, depending on where you are at different uh, times through the game, you'll have all night to sort of explore and to solve the mystery and to observe events as they unfold. Um, you know, you can see different things, and after you do a couple playthroughs, you sort of learn where to go when and not to advance time before you're, you're ready. Uh, and there's always things that you miss each time through. 
Uh, so that, that makes it actually kind of interesting that it's sort of impossible to see everything in this game in one playthrough, although there are some optimal results you can get um, once you learn your way around. So the frail, ill-tempered, and curmudgeonly colonel is before us. Um, never married, lives an eccentric life of seclusion. Uh, he is supposedly wealthy, but um, does, excuse me, doesn't seem to have spent a lot of money to uh, maintain his property. Uh, so let's see. Let's... Let's see how he takes to having his uh, niece's guest here. Talk to you, Henry. What are you doing in my room, young lady? Um, talk to Fifi. Fifi doesn't acknowledge. She's busy cleaning. Um, about Ethel, maybe? My sister is none of your business. Um, what about Gertie? My relationship with Gertrude is my own affair. Okay, I think Gertrude is his other sister. I don't know what. We're also not uh, allowed to use the elevator. I don't believe uh, he will prohibit. Um, <laughs> you don't have the elevator. You stay out of my elevator, he says. So he's. He, we see that he's in a wheelchair and presumably uses that, uh, you know, old-fashioned elevator to navigate his his complicated apartment. Let's have another look around. So, um, this is the front upstairs hallway of the plantation house. A grand staircase leads down to the lower level. Um, before we go, let's have a look in this room. Uh, Gloria and Gertie are sharing this room, and, uh, we don't see anybody in here at the moment. So, uh, there's another portrait, so we know that we will be able to, uh, eavesdrop in this room a little bit. I like to name my save games after the places that I go. Um, so you see the sparkling chandelier, it occasionally moves and makes jingling noises. You should know that everything in this old house is falling apart. Sometimes, when you're downstairs, if you walk directly under the chandelier, it can fall on you without warning. And if you look at this railing here, it's very unstable. And if you happen to uh, walk too close to the edge, you will see that the uh, structural integrity of the thing gives way, and that's another way that you can die if you're not careful uh, in a place like this. You see, you'll see Laura's floating angel spirit more often than once, and uh, warnings to be careful. It's not a pretty sight. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to show you that, that this game can occasionally surprise you with deaths that you weren't expecting if you don't watch your step, as your father John advised. Um, also, what happens here? If we open this door, it's just an empty closet. Okay, excellent. I think sometimes later in the game you can be pulled into that closet uh, to the end of your life if you uh, if you investigate it too frequently or too eagerly later in the game. Here we are in the front downstairs hallway of the big house. Uh, a grand stairway leads upstairs, and um, yeah, let's have a let's have another look around. See who else could be here, uh, and who else we could meet. There's a suit of armor. You can expect that's probably going to turn out to be important later. Uh, should we enter this room? And uh, right now we're just sort of exploring. Oh, we have found the Colonel's billiard room. Funny, he doesn't seem to be the kind of guy who would enjoy playing billiards, listening to records on the Victrola or the player piano. Oh, and time passes because we've discovered uh, another couple of folks here in the Colonel's house having a conversation. Uh, this would be Gloria Swansong, the flighty actress relative of the Colonel, and her brother Rudy, uh, interestingly enough. Um, and they don't want to talk in front of us either, of course. Um, I wonder, could we, could we uh, play piano? <laughs> you never learned to play the piano, but there is a winding mechanism. So... I'm just going to walk around. Don't mind me. I'm just a, a friend of Lillian's. Um, okay, not close enough, so wind piano. Here we go. Some people are so rude, don't you think, darling? Sorry, I'm just, you know, trying to, trying to have a good time. I know what you mean, Toots. So Rudy's kind of a scoundrel, and Gloria is a Hollywood actress stereotype. So um, here she is smoking a cigarette and wearing a pink feather boa, and uh, Rudy is very cleanly and handsomely dressed. So um, why don't we see what, what they have to say? Um, you know, I have a feeling that if we move that clock, we might be able to uh, find out what they're really up to, those shady characters. Move clock. The whole clock opens to reveal a secret door. So, um, a small hidden room again. So you actually, 
Uh, spoiler alert, the game is actually observing your detective skills as you play, which, which makes things very interesting. Um, you'll get points and credit for being able to notice things like uh, discarded objects or clues at the scenes of the various crimes. And uh, just because we won't get there on today's playthrough, I'd like to let you know that uh, we will find some dead bodies uh, as this game progresses and, and the body count will increase until we have to ourselves find out who the killer is or be killed ourselves. Um, Rudy is complaining that Uncle Henry's a miser. Gloria would like to know how rich Uncle Henry is. He's worth at least a couple mil. Look at that smarmy Rudy face and those expressive Rudy eyebrows. So my favorite childhood memories was laughing at his overly sincere and uh, villainous expression. Uh, Gloria also wonders why um, none of the colonel's money has gone to the maintenance of the place, um, but they both suspect the French maid of uh, maybe engineering an affair with Uncle Henry in order to get at his money. She practically has him round, wound around her little finger, darling. It's disgusting. So, uh, yeah, we see them talk, and uh, Gloria has a, a cigarette holder and some classic gloves. Uh, she's based on a famous actress, obviously. Uh, and now we find out what Gloria needs to figure out what to do about Clarence. Uh, I've decided to break up with Clarence. Uh, Clarence is, Henry, in, is uh, Henri's attorney, and he's going to be dumped for her new beau, a director. Uh, Rudy warns that perhaps Clarence is not going to take that well. So, uh, again, the early acts of the game are all about eavesdropping and learning the motives of the different characters and, and who who you like and who do you think is suspicious. Um, do you think that we've met the killer so far in our uh, early mansion ramblings? Um, Rudy's going to retire to his room. So often when you spy, you find out where people are going and where you can find them again if you want to kind of stalk them and uh, be a very creepy house guest to uh, just kind of prize around. So we could go and talk to Gloria some more. So even though, you know, this game is a little bit quaint and, and the characters are stereotypes that are sometimes offensive, I still think this game is incredibly worth playing. It's, it's, it's rich with amazing detail. Um, it can be scary at times. And the acumen that it takes to actually solve the puzzles to an extent that satisfies the game requirements is, uh, is significant. So, um, you know, you, you feel rewarded for your powers of observation, and uh, you will generally have to play through this game a few times before you, you learn and everything and you can get to the end feeling very smart only to find you know that you missed some things um i am interested in some point in the future doing a longer let's play of this game perhaps even a live stream or a marathon um maybe for a charitable cause or something so if you would be interested in seeing more of the colonel's bequest please do let me know because um as we're starting to move into the late 80s with this series i'm um, going to be looking at some games both great and small trying to avoid the big hits uh, in the hopes of showing you something new but um, you know as as these games get less museum curiosity and more you know relatable and historical um, I'd really like to hear from more from you guys about which ones you're interested in me spending more time on so let's finish our time together here as we see Gloria Swansong confront Dr. Wilbur um, she has some kind of secret as the fireplace roars and crackles in the background. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for uh, spending the time to explore the Colonel's Mansion with me in one of what I think is one of the best adventure games of all time and certainly one of my favorites. And uh, I hope you have the chance to try this game out for yourself. Um, it's available through you know many Sierra collections that were released over the years. Um, and I'm not sure the legality of emulation. You should look into that before you emulate it, but that is, let's say, possible to do. Uh, anyway, I, I really... I feel grateful to uh, Ken and Roberta for work like this and, uh, you know, just defining experiences of my childhood like uh, like this game. So thank you so much for, for coming along today and uh, I hope to hear from you. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos um, and if you are watching this video through my YouTube channel, be sure to visit the Lo-Fi Let's Play tag on Rock Paper Shotgun for uh, usually uh, a post with some additional analysis and commentary from me. I appreciate having you along for these sort of special journeys back in time. And uh, I hope you're not too scared by this mansion. Um, maybe if you get a little further, you will be. Take care. Bye-bye.